When I was introduced to the work of Buckminster Fuller in my mid-twenties, I did not know the trajectory my life would take because of this. I was ambitious. I wanted the traditional trappings of success, financial wealth, status, travel. Something about Bucky's work, expressed by example through his life, stirred something profound inside me. I've always been a force for justice, the child who threw herself between the bully and the bully's victim. I did this instinctively, never contemplating that my physical smallness might endanger me. I was a loner, time spent as a child in forests and fields, flooded with romantic images of flowing dresses and beauty, always in awe of the trees and plants, bare feet my preference, a book or pen close by. The edges of everything drew me forward, those unexplored places, both physically and in my imagination. I believe I flew in my sleep high over the roofs of the houses. This view from above was so real to me. Into this fertile ground of social justice warrior, nature child and visionary pioneer landed the work of Bucky Fuller. The perfect combination of nerdishness, geometry and maths, physics and architecture, I landed with glee entranced by learning what Bucky called nature's coordinate system. My sharp mind was captivated. Hello, this is Christine McDougall and this is Sunday Centropy for October 9th, 2023. Challenging the monetary monolith, a new way to value life's moments. Life did not turn out as I expected. Does it ever? My ambition was tempered severely to the point of depression as I cried to the void for decades. What was wrong with me? Of course, nothing was wrong with me. I was going through all the slings and arrows of life, the whole crucible experience where everything that was not needed for my work was obliterated. For some time, I did not trust the ground beneath my feet, all. All of my beliefs were challenged. Most of them I let go. I look back now and wonder how I ever held those beliefs. There is a perfection to this story that I shudder to acknowledge as the journey to here was incredibly painful for many years. Yet to finally, after five decades, reach a place absent apology for the stand I hold is, in a sense, a reclamation of the young child who threw herself between the bully and the victim without a second thought. I've been going through a similar but far less violent experience these last few months. I do so admire how life takes us and shakes us down, a plan far more significant than my brain can conjure. Two values have defined me from the beginning, the quest for truth and the stand for integrity. Neither of these is an easy path, as truth is contextual, partial and emergent, and integrity asks from us things at times that can threaten our existence and identity. My love of knowledge, curiosity and keen mind have been my strongest tools. For years, I was told my mind was too strong and needed to be tempered instead to allow for feelings. And while learning to feel fully and silence the mind is a great practice, disqualifying my mind, my gift, is to disqualify what makes me, me. My mind and intellect are my strengths. My love of edges and pioneering takes me to places few go. My social justice impulse has me fight. And Bucky's work insists that I understand the whole, always. Over these last few months, I have felt that my work in Centropic World might still inhabit the space of polishing the guardrails on the Titanic, hoping the boat will not sink. Am I a strong enough stand for a world with a future? And if not, what must I do towards the change I seek to support? The answer has been no, I need to be a stronger stand. And yes, it is time to level up my work. But how? And what? These questions have been circulating in my brain for many months. Simultaneously, I have been working on the synergistic accounting tool, creating it into an application that allows a beautiful user experience. For those unfamiliar with synergistic accounting, it is based on Bucky's 12 degrees of freedom, 
and its purpose is to change humanity's relationship to value, what we value, how we value, what we measure, and how we exchange. As one synergistic accounting student said, to remember the divine value of everything. Thank you, Ema. The team working with me on this asked me to consider the question, what is the currency of value? For the last 15 years, I have read far and wide on money, economy, global finance, debt, capitalism and currency, inspired by my broken relationship with money, wealth and value. Those books and articles continue to be my bedside reading. Having worked with a synergistic accounting tool for eight years and seen how it transforms human relational dynamics while being an incredibly personal development tool, I was unsure how to answer the question, what is the currency of value? But I knew with certainty that the world we must bring to life would flat out refuse to convert everything to a monetary or token exchange value. The moment we attempt to commodify precious moments love and beauty, the weightless immeasurable qualities that make a life valuable, we are again lost in the very structure of everything that says yes to the exploitation of life and our future. Many times the currency of value is the experience we value itself, not convertible, never able to be commodified, never reducible. The world we have now is a world that converts everything to a monetary value with a growth imperative, which is in the final throes of collapse. Into this milieu of my inner exploration and multifaceted inquiry, a field ripe for seizure, I watched this video recorded a few weeks ago with Daniel Schmachtenberger, a person I admire as one of integrity and wisdom. Daniel is speaking at the close of the Impact Summit in Sweden. This video is 50 minutes long. Be sure to have a pen and paper ready. The link for the video is in the show notes. He spoke to me, confirming all that I had been feeling, thinking and sensing. It is time for me and Centropic World to step up and out, for me to be a more explicit stand for the world I hold possible. As Bucky said in the 1980s, it is touch or go if we make it. I suspect it is more to the negative side now than the positive. We may not make it. But I affirm that the work I have started, a culmination of all of those slings and arrows of life, is on track. My sensing around the synergistic accounting tool, money and the currency of value is essential. The earth beneath my feet has shifted. I have shifted. I don't know which one came first. Yet the way is clearing. I can see the beginnings of a path and the right people are showing up. When I apply two of the principles of a centropic enterprise, one, to tune into the pattern integrity of the source idea I am stewarding to life, and two, seek only the next step and know that when I am on the path, people and opportunities will open that were not there previously, then I feel strongly that I am on path. I feel restored to ground in my being. The itch of being off path and needing a recalibration, gone. The wheels are turning. I hope you continue with me and Centropic World on this journey. We have important work to do, with urgency requiring all consideration and slowness to get started so we can move ever faster. And an unapologetic commitment, the one Daniel asked for at the close of his talk. Let me know if you're in. Reply to this email. This episode is sponsored by the Dare to Care workshop, which is coming up in a few weeks. In this world of fake news, no truths, and rare deep knowledge, wisdom, and intuition, we must find better tools to communicate the radical truth with compassion. Would you like to stand more clearly on your power and ask for what you want and need to build a world for a future? Join us for Dare to Care, How to Speak the Radical Truth with Compassion, commencing October 19th, 2023, a workshop filled with tools to use in your work and life. Transform your ability to communicate. Transform your relationships with self and others. 
It's not some slick course with 10 points or tricks and tips, but it's about action on behalf of a cause, action that goes beyond what is conventional or routine, says one of our graduates. The link to read more and enroll is in the show notes. I love answering your questions. So if you have any questions for this episode or previous episodes, please visit centropic.world forward slash podcast and click the orange button. Hi, Steve from Melbourne here. And my question is... Hi, this is Robin from warm and sunny Tanzania. My question is... Good morning. This is uh, Michael Freiber from Germany. My question is... Hi, this is Colleen in the Netherlands. My question is... Hi, this is Cindy from beautiful Cambridge. Hello, I am Paul Epping from the Netherlands. And my question for the podcast... Bonjour, my name is Dorothy from Brussels, Belgium. Hi, my name is Ivan from Cali, Colombia, but I'm living in Bali right now. Um, so my question is... Hi, I'm Rochelle Armstrong from North East Victoria, Australia. My question is... Hi, F. This is Lorraine in Montreal, Canada. And my question is... And that completes my question. And that completes my question.